It is Saturday, the 12th of February. How do I know this? Well, of course, it's probably the most special of days in the year for me. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Before we begin our show today, I'd like to say good morning to my spirit guide, Grey Eagle, who is standing right by my side. And I would also like to say good morning to Chris. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, everyone. Do we have everybody? Do we have anybody? Is there anybody there, Chris? People are rapidly locking on. Are they? All right. Well, we'll chat for a little bit before I start in with my story. But um, <clears throat> Chris, uh, you know, you were, you were reminding me that this time last year, I think it was even on this day, wasn't it? Was Reese here on his actual birthday? He was. Um, so this time last year, uh, your wonderful Mike was sitting at the table making a soda can dog, I do recall, right? Is that a right? A robot, anyway. Was it a, a robot? robot? Yeah. Uh, yes, it was like a dog robot or whatever it was, anyway, using a soda can. And did they use pipe cleaners? I seem to remember yeah. pipe cleaners came into it. And um, I can't remember now how they did it, but I remember seeing them, their heads together, pouring over, making this, this uh, weird thing that they had. And then uh, finally getting it going and running it all over the floor and uh, having a lot of fun with it. And I think, as you reminded me, I think that might have been the last time I actually saw Mike. I don't know that it was the last time. I've got an inkling that there might have been another time. But maybe it was the last time I actually physically, in a physical sense, saw Mike, but of course I've seen him many, many times. And even as I'm speaking, you might know that when we start talking about Mike, you do know, don't you, that he's waving at, at us <coughs> and saying good morning to us and happy birthday to Reese. So that's, isn't that nice? That's um, awesome. But what a great memory, Chris, for you too. Yeah. I'm sure you would wish to be with Reese today, but he'll be well, here I soon enough. I've been on the phone to him several times. It's not even 11 o'clock, but I was on the phone to him at 8, at uh, 20 past 8, half past 8. Uh, he, then, he, then I was on the phone with his mom. We were FaceTiming. And then uh, he came, He had a play date with his friend from, from 8 until 9.15. Then uh, I was on the phone to him again, and uh, I was included in the unwrapping of of the presence so we even though we're not physically there we do try to do so many things together and i think the the fantastic thing who knew who knew how wonderful facetime was going to be when it first came out i can remember the very very first time i ever used facetime before reese was even a little twinkle oh wait a minute no he was a twinkle that brings me, I think, to my story. So is everybody settling down, Chris? What do you think? They are. Okay. So, all right, here we go. It is Saturday morning, the 12th of February, uh, and it's story time. So are you sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. So many years ago now, it's hard for me to remember Although when I do think about it, I remember this very clearly. It was, oh golly, in the, I'm trying to think, it was in the mid-70s. How many years ago is that, Chris? That's 50 years ago, right? Or something like that, 40-something years ago. Anyway, it was in the, it was somewhere around the, the, um, the early 70s, early to mid-70s. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, some of you have heard the whole of this story. This I'm, I'm only going to tell you a little piece of it. But I was in a, I was working in a shop. I was only young at the time, sort of uh, not even 
not even 30, I don't think, anyway, whenever, whatever time it was. And I was working in this shop and I was, uh, I was doing carpentry, laying floors. Yes, I used to do all that sort of thing and loved every minute of it. It was very creative with wood. And I could lay a, a wood, wood floor, tongue and groove, not just planks laying down, but tongue, proper tongue and groove, doing the proper job. And I could do all of that. And um, I was doing some work in uh, one of the shops in the company that I worked for. And in walked this lady. She looked very ordinary. I remember she wore a sort of a green raincoat, a bit drab, nothing special. And um, she came in and for some weird reason, the manageress of the shop and her assistant dove in the far corner of the shop out of the way because they saw her coming and they didn't say anything to me at all, but they just dove out of the way and hid from her. They didn't want to have anything to do with that. They must have known as she must have been in before. So I look around for them. They're not going to approach this lovely lady as far as I'm concerned. She's just another customer. And I, so I climb out of the window and I say hello to her and I say, can I help you with something? And she says, cross my palm with silver, dearie, and I will tell your fortune. Well, I didn't have any silver. I made her a cup of tea. You can read the story somewhere in one of the books. I think it's in Eagle and the Rose, maybe. But at some point during some of the most, uh, probably, the most amazing, maybe half an hour that I've ever had in my life, one of the most amazing half hours that I've ever had in my life, she told me so many, many things. But one of the things she told me was that uh, she described where I would live and, and it, it took years and years for these things to pass. It took years and years for the things that she told me to come true. You know, she, but she was very specific about many, many things. Every single thing, every single thing that she told me came true. Except one thing. And she said, you're going to have a boy and he's going to be the most special person, the most special child in your life. You will worship the ground he walks on. He is going to be your special heartbeat. Well, the years went by and I thought maybe I would have another baby, but that didn't happen. The years carried on by and on and on it goes. And all those years later, so we're talking 25, 30 years later, something like that, maybe, maybe more, my darling boy appears on the scene. And as soon as my daughter gets pregnant, I just know. You know how you know when you know. And uh, and he is everything that this wonderful gypsy lady told me he would be. Okay, that's only part of my story. Let's go back again, way, way back again. Still, I'm a young woman, but a little older now and working myself as a spiritual medium. And I have a young lady who comes to see me and I, I've gotten to know her. she comes fairly often and she comes to the healing center and she brings her two little girls with her and one day she comes to see me and uh, as she's leaving I look at her and I see that special something I've always wanted to know what the gypsy lady saw when she saw my grandson with me, but I'll never know and I'll never be able to ask her. I, I never saw her again. But I can tell you what I see, what I saw with my friend. Now, if you go to a, any Disney channel and you put on any, you put Cinderella on or any of those things, somewhere in there is the fairy, the fairy godmother. <coughs> Excuse me. And somewhere in there in the Disney show, especially in the cartoons, there's a cartoon character who waves her wand and she goes like this and you hear that tinkling, tinkling, tinkling sound. But you also, along with that tinkling sound, you see all this bright, 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 shiny stardust that sort of bursts from the wand like this. 
but it's silver and moving and shiny and that's what I see when I look at a lady who is carrying a baby or even someone who is preparing, even though they don't even know it yet, preparing for the soul to enter. I see that starburst is the best thing I can call it. And it is magical. So here is this young lady who's come to me for a consultation. She's become a friend. We've had a cup of tea. I'm letting her, opening the door for her, letting her out of the door when I, I look at her and I see this, wow, this sparkle, this starburst. And it's out of my mouth before I can think. And I look at her and I say, are you, are you pregnant? Don't you dare say such a thing. I don't want any more babies. I've got two babies. Oh, no, 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 no. And off she goes. And it's only a two or three weeks later that she calls, yelling down the phone at me. You did this to me. You did this to me. Well, I think her husband might have had more to do with it than I did. But again, how do we, how do we know? How can we tell? And then, of course, we come to the story of this lovely lady, young woman, who would come to me and she tried and tried and tried everything to get pregnant. And she came to me at one year, two years, three years, four years. And every time I saw her, she would say to me, you know, Rosemary, if you... <clears throat> if you don't see a baby, it's okay, just tell me. I'm, I'm over the disappointments. And she was so, 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 so disappointed. And she I believe she'd had a, a few issues and she simply could not get pregnant. And it was before the days when we had, you know, we, we didn't have in vitro in those days. And we, you know, we, we didn't even have that, that pill that creates uh, whatever it creates that gives us multiple babies. We didn't have any of those things in, 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 in going back because I'm going back a few years now. And um, I, but every time she would come to me and she was desperate and she would cry and she would get upset. And I would have loved to be able to say to her, look, this is not going to happen. Um, why don't you adopt? And I would have loved to have been able to, to be there with her and to encourage her to um to to move on with her life and to, to do something else but every time she asked me i saw babies gray eagle saw babies and this went on for a few years and every time she came back to me she'd be disappointed because it hadn't happened and then it still hadn't happened and then eventually her, her mother called me can i come and see you and i didn't know it was a mother was she yes come, you know of course and she went after me she was a real mama bear she was very protective of her daughter and she was very angry with me because i was i kept saying to her daughter every time i look at you i see babies not one baby i see babies and it was always in the plural and I would have loved to have said to her, just give up, don't worry, you know, just move on. But I have to be true to my gift. And as much as I didn't like it, and as much as it seemed as if I was giving this poor girl false hope year after year after year, if I see it, and if Gregor says it, then I am obliged to, because it's not for me to decide what I tell people. When they come to me for a consultation the spirit world has the floor it's down to them and i have to go with what they say this is this is where we sort of edge a little bit on the trust issue don't we how much do you trust do you trust enough to to sort of keep going and keep going even though it does seem that what you're saying isn't so isn't right and it's not going to happen um, do you keep going anyway? But I was so sure of Grey Eagle and I was so trusting in Grey Eagle that he would 
give me as putting his hand on my shoulder as I'm saying this year he was I was so absolutely trusting in him that even though it was heartbreaking to say to this girl and I would say to her I'd love to say move on I'd love to say this but I see babies I see you having babies and then one time she came remember she'd been coming to me now for years I remember her husband was a farmer you know I think all of her family got fed up with her I think all of her family wanted her to move on and to move forward and to let go of this not obsession but this this need and this hope that she would have babies and um, as I say the mother came and she didn't quite punch me but boy oh boy you know if words if words could hurt she berated me she accused me of giving her daughter false hope um i understood i totally understood where she was coming from and as a mother i probably would have done the same thing myself but i have to be true to the gift i have to be true to what i see and babies 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 so one day I come home and uh, I had only been out for, for a few minutes just to the corner shop, so I'd left the garage open. <coughs> I came home, pulled into the driveway and the garage door was open and there, sitting inside the, the garage on the work surface, was the biggest bouquet of flowers I think I've ever had in my life. It was an enormous bouquet of flowers and I'm thinking wow you know who sent these uh, and I went in and picked them up and there was a card and all the card said was we did it yay I still didn't know who it was from but not long after that I got a phone call from my lovely client who said Finally, and she was sobbing. She was sobbing with joy. Finally, finally, Rosemary, finally. Um, a few months later, without the pills, without any of the help from the medical profession, without any of that stuff, and true to the wisdom of the spirit world, and true to the knowledge of the spirit world, uh, she had triplets. She had three boys. Now, after a while they were growing, I believe she opened a nursery and then she opened a school for kids or something. And um, I didn't keep up with her because, well, you know, there was no point in needing to see me anymore, right? Um, and I would hear from her from time to time. And it's not so long ago that I had a, um, an email from her remember me all those years ago and now her boys are well they're strapping men obviously three triplets wonderful three boys three strong healthy babies uh, just as Greg Eagle had said we see babies I mean it's odd isn't it? it is there such a thing as fortune telling can we really see the future is it is it possible? And I've told you all the story of, uh, of telling my daughter the date that she was going to have my grandson. I have told you all the story of the time of the time I gave to her. Uh, re I remember saying the time she's grumpy and a.m. or p.m. <laughs> and I said a.m. Um, I have seen it so many times. Is there such a thing? as definite and exact times that we are to be born i know that there are exact times for us to pass to for us to die but is there an exact time for us to be born and the more i know and the more i learn it would seem that there is now uh, chris made a, a very interesting comment this morning which has set me off on this story um Yes, that's all very well, Rosemary, but is it the angels that bring our babies to us? Who is it who carries these souls to us? Who is it who brings them, who places them in the womb? Who is it who comes with them? And uh, she asked me the question, um, 
you know, who who is it who brought Reese? And uh, my immediate answer was, well, of course, Gregel had a great deal to do with that, as you can imagine. But my daddy, who is standing in front of me, uh, also had something to do with that too. So, you know, is there such a thing as fortune telling? I believe so. Are there times to be born and times to die? Without a doubt, absolutely, I believe so. Isn't this an amazing thing that we're talking about? That, you know, there are some things in our lives that are so inevitable. No matter what we do, we can't change them. And uh, all of those, oh gosh, many years ago, when I was about 27 years old and my, my wonderful gypsy lady told me, you will have, there will be a baby, a boy who comes into your life and he will be the most special. And here he is, all of those years later, nine years old and celebrating his birthday today. So darling boy, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. And I love you more. I love you best in the world and 99 and one and anything else that comes after that the end there you oh, go that's so beautiful rosemary i swear <laughs> i think i had a smile the whole time you were you were telling that story because children are such gifts aren't they yes i mean my friend i'm not sure if i told the end of that story but yes she was pregnant she called me and blamed me it's your fault and so on so forth. <laughs> i don't know what she thought i had to do with it and she did also have uh, another daughter, Jessica, who uh, often listens in on the show. So just want to do a shout out to Jessica and to Chloe. And of course, let's not forget Anna, who is the oldest, probably the wisest uh, uh, of them all. So um, those girls belong to my friend Kay. And we are going to be organizing at some point another cracking up show with the two of them and with me also. Okay, moving Something forward. Something to look forward to. Yes. Well, Annika says, I love all of your stories. I had read the story of the gypsy lady in your book, <laughs> Proud Spirit, but nothing is as great as hearing you also tell it in person. That's right. And you know, when you write stories, when you write, anybody writes a book, the book is only, you know, can only be so long. You can only have so many words um, and, uh, you know, and you have to limit it and edit it. And I think when you're telling a story, uh, there are lots of things within the story that perhaps aren't even in the book because you can't tell every little detail of, uh, of you know, of what's going on. You really, you really can't. So, you know, it's all, I think it's always fun to listen to the story firsthand. I just love that you've now got all of these shows. So as Reese grows older yeah. and once you've passed on into the spirit world, he can replay these over and over and, you know, just have those moments of seeing you again and hearing your voice and, you know, remembering these great stories. Well, I also think for everybody out there, I would advise, you know, <clears throat> before FaceTime, before before we had Zoom, before we had all of these things, I used to send my students out, you know, perhaps once a year or something. I'd say to them, okay, I want you to take your tape recorder, right? Uh, this is what we used to use years ago. Take your tape recorder and go and interview someone in your family. Um, and maybe even two or three someone's in your family, like perhaps a grandmother or a grandfather, uh, perhaps an aunt or an uncle. You know, go and sit down with them and interview them to have a set of questions ready and, uh, you know, interview them so that, you know, when they're gone, you still have their voice, you still have their stories, you have their anecdotes and you have the interaction that goes on between you. And I did that with my father and um, to hear him telling us how to cook a turkey is hysterical. It's, and of course, I'm there egging him on in the background to tell us to tell me in the most uh, detail but being able to listen to that after uh, your loved ones are gone is so important and now of course we we can not only <coughs> we 
we can not only use a tape recorder, we can actually film what we're doing. We can actually have it on camera and see the person, just as you said, Chris, Reese will be you know, able to look at me, he'll be able to sort of go through the archives of my work and see what I've been up to. And it'll give him a better and a clearer picture of who I am. You know, he'll see sides of me that as a boy, he doesn't see. Exactly. So, excuse me. So, um, yeah, so I would encourage anybody and everybody with your children, with your grandchildren, with your aunts, with your uncles, with your parents with your grandparents whoever it is you know to to make go and make a a, you know a little a little history of your family and have them you know talk to you and interview them and ask them how did they first meet their husband and or their wife and or you know what was their childhood like lots of things that uh, they you know that they uh, might want to talk to you about but haven't yet talked to you about you can learn so much about you know people so you know, so uh, I, that should be one of the angel actions. I'm not sure if it is, but it should be one of the angel actions that you that you attempt. So you all need to now go out there and do that. And if any of you do do that, please let us know. Because I think what happens when you do interview and you do record like this, uh, it's, it's amazing what you learn. And it's amazing how much joy you get from the interaction and uh, you know there's old granny right she's sitting in the corner she doesn't say very much to anybody but if you sit with her open up to her get her a little glass of whiskey or a little bit of something in a tea or whatever it is you want to you know uh, give to her that, that sort of gives a little bit of fun and comfort you'd be amazed at what old granny quiet in the corner can tell you and uh, it's it's just a really fun thing to do Okay, Chris. Well, um, I don't know if you remember this because I was one of those students that did that assignment uh, with Mike years and years ago. Oh, you did? Yeah. And uh, maybe a month or two after we passed, we came across, I should say after he passed, we came across an envelope that said to be opened after my death with the little tape recorder um, cassette of how the interview went between he and I, and we gave it to the boys. It was addressed to the boys. He had written it that way. Oh, nice. So um, it was just so nice to hear his voice. And, you know, these interviews, it's not all, let's just say, fun and happiness. You know, you can hear the tones in their voice when they're, maybe they're a little annoyed because you're pressing them on the question or, (laughs) you know, things like that. So you after a person passes, you start to remember all the good things about them, right? You know, you sort of let those other things slip to the side. But when you do it this way, it's real. And you go, oh, that's what he sounded like when he was annoyed. Or that's what he <laughs> sounded like when he was happy. And that's a good thing. Because exactly. You, you've got him back. You've got the real uh, him back. Even if it's only for a few moments, you've got him there. and And it's, you know... And, uh, you know, I advise you to go make copies of that or put it digital, digitalize it or whatever it is to keep it so that it doesn't disappear on you. But I think, you know, having a record of these things, I mean, photos are great and videos are great, um, but interviews and, and, you know, I'm sure, Chris, did you, well, I shouldn't say I'm sure, did you ask him uh, if he had anything to say to the boys, what would he say? Those sorts of things. Did you ask? those things. I did. It was so interesting because my whole line of thought was um, answer this as if you're gone. So while I was interviewing him, it was answer this as if you're gone. And so every question was, what would you have hoped to have seen for the boys and all those kinds of things. So that's basically all they they heard on this interview after he had actually passed. So it was a real life situation. So, so how nice how nice that they heard his voice they heard his feelings they heard how we felt felt about them and it was just that must have been a wonderful gift for them i think so all right we going for more questions yes all right um i i should say do you want to finish it do you want to end it then (laughs) no 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 I, I should say, Rosemary, that just about everybody in the chat room has written to Reese to say happy birthday. So I'm Aww. not going to read each one. I know you'll see those later. 
I will. And that's so nice of you all. Thank you so, so much. And when Reese comes next week, is they're coming on Friday, uh, I can show him what you all sent to him. So that's so nice of you all. Thank you so very much. All right. So Judith, Judith is saying, when I was a young child, I told my sister I knew I would never have children. I was married twice, but never became pregnant. Do you think I made that decision before I was born? It could be. You, you might have just decided, you know, that was not the way you wanted to go. You probably, I'm sure you probably did many other things. And um, you, for those of us who have children, of course, we rave about them. We, you, hear, you hear me with Reese. I can't, you know, and with my daughter, of course. She'll sometimes say to me, what am I, chop liver? Because, he, well, you know, because he's, he's just a little boy. Um, but um, there are so many things that we can do in life that get, bring us fulfillment and bring us happiness and bring us joy. Uh, it doesn't have to be children. And those of you who have, have animals know exactly what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, there are people who sort of have, you know, careers that they couldn't possibly have had if they had children. But yeah, I would say that if you were saying this when you were a child, you had a knowing sense of that. Uh, I, I'm, I am wondering, because you knew at such a young age, um, were you disappointed uh, when you didn't have them? Were you happy to not have them? We, we're curious about that too. All right, so Cheryl's saying, so if you see future events, often it's not any particular time frame. Oh yes, it, it, there's always a time frame. Um, but <clears throat> more often than not, of course it doesn't apply to my daughter because <laughs> I'm nosy and I want to know. So whether or not I tell her is a whole other thing. But um, yes, the, the things that are meant to be, they have that, they do have a time frame. And, um, but sometimes it's not a good thing for us to know. So even though I can perhaps warn somebody, or especially if I, if some, if I see something that's coming that they're not going to be happy with, or they, it's going to, you know, be a little traumatic for them, um, sometimes knowing about it is very helpful, but knowing exactly when perhaps isn't so helpful. I do remember, um, and I've probably told this story before, but I do remember a lovely lady in Hong Kong who came to me for a consultation. And um, as we were sitting there, uh, and she was recording the, the whole conversation, and as we were sitting there, I remember her grandmother was uh, there for her and um, and of course Gregor was there for her as well and I remember her being told um, that there will come a time and there was no, we didn't give a time frame even though the spirit world knew exactly when and uh, I might have had an inkling of when but she didn't need to know the time frame but she was told there will come a time when God will ask of you a great sacrifice. And uh, we want you to know that this is an inevitability. And they talked a little bit about this sacrifice and how blessed she would be and how hard it would be for her. And of course, we had no inkling or she had no inkling <clears throat> at the time. Her grandmother obviously knew Grey Eagle obviously knew, and it was perhaps over a year, just over a year later, that her son, young son, was uh, drowned. Um, but I, I've told that story before, so we won't go into that. But I remember when she called me, and um, at this point, they hadn't found his body, so she was still holding out hope. Everybody was searching for him, and they, everybody was still holding out hope that they would find him. But when I saw this boy being lifted by his angels and I described to her what I was seeing, she was sobbing and sobbing, but she said, I, I just knew, Rosemary, I just knew that he was gone. And then I spoke to her after that and uh, she, she described to me how she would often go 
and lie down in his bed and hold his favourite teddy and play the tape that we made, that she made of, uh, of her grandmother. And her grandmother said lots of things to her. And the, the part about the sacrifice was only a small part of it. But she would tell me how she would listen to the whole thing and how it gave her comfort because it, she knew that it, number one, it was something that was meant to be. And she knew number two, that there was nothing she could have done about it, nothing she could have changed about it. And that, that tape, that my voice on that tape gave her such comfort. And she described how it was the only thing that was helping her to get through the loss of her child. This is another reason why I encourage people to, to go and interview, you know, your family, your friends, your kids, whoever, <clears throat> because, you know, you never know when uh, a time is up. Things happen, you know, one minute you're here, the next minute you're gone. But to have the record and to have the, the wonder of being able to see the ones you love and then talking to you and, uh, you know, just being around you and, and interacting together is, uh, is it's very, very precious. So I would advise for all of you to do that as much as you can. Chris. Dean says, speaking of babies, yes. my youngest son is a new father as of 435 this morning. My seventh <laughs> grandchild from my seven children. You should like those numbers, Rosemary, sevens. Oh. I love those numbers, Dean. I love those numbers. Wow. How fa Oh, do we know? Is it a boy? Is it a girl? Dean, come on. We want the details. How much weight, so on and so forth. My friend Mary Lou, she had her second grandson born um, a couple of days ago. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's spring, things are happening. Come on, Dean, give us more details. How exciting. The seventh son of the seventh son of the seventh son is very special, I do believe. As I think the seventh daughter of the seventh daughter of the seventh daughter and so on and so forth. <coughs> so very interesting. All right, Cheryl says, my best friend is Native American. My ex-boyfriend was involved in Native culture. I often watch movies and something native oriented is in it, but I didn't know. People I am drawn to are often native. What is this connection? I even lived on a road with a native name. Well, obviously you have a, some sort of spiritual connection to the native community, which is amazing. Dig into it, Cheryl, go for it. All right. Lorraine says, what would be the reason for a woman not being able to conceive other than physical ailment or whatever it is? Is it preordained that a soul does not want to enter a particular woman's womb? Are there reasons unknown? Well, I think that um, there are so many things in life that are planned and there's so many things that are inevitable. And I think that prior to our birth here, we know a lot of the inevitables and we know or we understand the lessons that we're going to need to learn and uh, and how we're going to need to to live our lives and so on um i mean you know uh i think that um some of us if we're meant to have children that's what we do if it's meant to be then it will happen and um you know i don't think uh, the womb has a great deal to do with it because, you know, there's such a thing as adoption. There's such a thing as, um, you know, the uh, in vitro now we can do that. My daughter had to go that way. Uh, I lost lots of babies along the way to getting my daughter. She was my miracle. Um, so if, if it's meant to be, it will happen. And if it's not meant to be, then it won't, no matter what. Okay. Christy says, that was a wonderful story, Rosemary. My little boy and father have passed to the other side, and I miss them terribly. Oh, my gosh. I'm looking forward to the time I see them again. Well, um, first of all, let me say I'm so, so sorry for your loss. Um, 
but yes do please understand that you will see them again but I'm pretty sure that they're around you and uh, so listen carefully because I think you may already have seen him you may already have uh, connected with him in one way or another so listen very carefully because I don't think he's that far away from you Chris Maggie says, good morning. This is a special day today. I'm taking my grandsons to see Disney on ice. Oh, nice. Whoa. <laughs> Love it. Well, my grandson is going ice skating uh, for his birthday party. And then, and then what? Um, they're having the cake and all the rest of it. And um, then unbeknownst to him, he's, he's, He's got a sleepover with two of his friends. Uh, so he's having a sleepover. So he's excited about that. And unbeknown to him, and I can say this now because he won't, hopefully, maybe I shouldn't say. No, he won't be listening to this. He'll be busy with his cake and his friends are coming and all of that. So his mum is taking him to see a special show today as well. So Maggie, we hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day with your grandsons. These are magical times. Take some videos. Rhonda says, such a great idea. I have video of my dad who has passed telling our family how much he loves us. I treasure that. Yes. Well, the nice thing about when you do it yourself, excuse me, everybody. I'm sorry. The nice thing about doing it for yourself, I think, is because because you can have interaction. And it's amazing because we don't see ourselves, do we, within interacting with our loved ones. We just do it. We interact. But when you see it on camera and you see it going on and you see all the interactions, I think it's fantastic. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Bridget, Bridget <coughs> says, your story gives me hope. I'm aching to have grandbabies. But as you know, <laughs> it's not up to me. I, know. I feel a special connection to these special souls already. Does that sound crazy? Absolutely not. No way. Because I know that if you meant to have grandchildren, they're waiting in the wings. So no, no, it doesn't feel doesn't feel odd at all. Not at all. It's it's uh, when I think about my daughter that I just mentioned. I had a few miscarriages before her and a few after, and I mean a few. You know, that here and there. Um, you know, she is a, a very special child to me. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, my idea growing up as a perfect family was to have three children, two boys and a girl, I decided. Who knew? And maybe I did. Maybe I had a few more than two boys and a girl. But, um, of course, she was very special because she was a miracle child, and she really was. I had to... I had to lie in bed for nine solid months in order to produce her. And then I look at my darling boy, Reese, and uh, he was very special too because she had to go through all sorts and, uh, of issues. And she had a, one, one of her fallopian tubes was um, probably deformed at birth, so not non-functioning. The other one, she had an ectopic pregnancy and that blew that one out. So the only way she could have a baby at all was through in vitro. And who knew all of those years ago when that old gypsy said to me, you know, there's going to be a boy. Who knew that that was the way we would have to go? Um, you know, miracles happen all the time. So and our children are, of course, our miracles, as are our puppies and our kittens and uh, <laughs> and our hamsters and our mice or whatever other pets you guys have all got out there <laughs> Annika says I'm so glad I took so many pictures of my Neil even when he was sometimes a little annoyed that I took yet another picture I came <laughs> yeah. across a very short video of him where I heard his voice my older cell phone showed me, much to my surprise, a little movie of just pictures of him that even had movement. Sometimes I think my darling Neil was responsible for that lovely surprise. I think you might be right. How lovely. How really, really lovely. We have to treasure these moments, don't we? We do. Okay, keep going, Chris. Dean says... Um, the name of his grandson, E-M-E-R-I. 
Emery Joe Young, 6 pounds, 13 ounces, 20 inches long, born February 12th at 4.35. Um, wow, what a great birthday, February 12th, Dean. We've got this in common now, too. We're celebrating our grandsons. <laughs> he says, my eldest son was born on December the 12th at 4.35 also. Wow. Well, you know, we know... You know, this is when you say, do, 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 we? we say all those spooky, spooky stuff going on, but we love it. Yeah, that was like my two boys. Both of them had a due date of June 13th. Neither of them were born on June 13th, but in separate time zones, they were both born at 11.04 a.m. Very interesting. Isn't very, it? Very interesting. Yeah, my I have two brothers, both born on exactly the same day, two years apart. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, we love it when those things happen, don't we? Yeah, Judith says, my first husband wanted children. I was taking birth control pills prescribed. I quit taking the pills, but never became pregnant. Second husband said no, and I was not sad. Oh, that's good. I, I like that you're not sad. I think that's great. Um, and, uh, you know, we do what is right for us. Children are not the be all and end all. Of course, in my life, they are, but not in everyone's life. Chris, keep going. <laughs> Gary is here. He's saying, howdy, Rosemary. Hi, darling. Uh, Sarah says, uh, hi, Rosemary. Does Gray Eagle see my friend getting the help they need sooner than later? Uh, I'm hearing one word, sooner. I don't know what you're going to do with that. That's as much as I've got there. <coughs> hey, Chris. All right. That's it for questions right now. I'm going to scroll back up to see if I missed anything. That's it. All right. So are we done? <laughs> I know they don't want to be done. <laughs> I've got. Oh, I've wait got a second. Or... I've, I've got one from Andrew. Oh, okay. Um, love has shown through. I have a daughter called Megan from my first marriage. She's been estranged, and we haven't spoken for many years. I received a letter from her Friday, just gone, signed with a kiss, and giving me her number if I would like to phone her. Oh my gosh, Andrew, that is fantastic. I hope you are going to call her. And, you know, we talked a, a little bit, was it on Thursday about, um, you know, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? Was that on Thursday we talked about that stuff? Um, and it doesn't matter whose fault it is when you've got a, when you, when you've got an issue, and I think it's the angel action is resolve an issue. Uh, uh, and um, it doesn't matter whose fault it is, uh, and very often it's nobody's particular fault, it's misunderstandings that happen. Um, we can always say we're sorry. We might not be saying sorry for, you know, for the perceived thing that we did that was terrible, but we are sorry for the estrangement. We are sorry for the misunderstanding. We're sorry for many things. So saying you're sorry is should be very easy uh it's not you're not admitting guilt and you're not you're just saying you're sorry for everything that has happened the end and uh we wish that because it is our angel action this week we wish that more and more of you would would you know if you have issues if you have problems uh try to resolve them before it's too late uh because you never know what's around the corner and I see so many people in the spirit world, and I talk to so many people in the spirit world who have regrets. If only I'd said something, if only I'd picked up the phone, if only I would, if only I'd have said sorry, uh, <clears throat> if only, if only. Um, and there are so many people I speak to who are still here with us on this earth who, who live in guilt and regret that they were too stubborn or too proud or too confused or just simply didn't know how to fix the issue. Um, so please, you know, if you've got an issue with someone, resolve it. Please, 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 Andrew, 
I think this is wonderful. I think you should. Aren't you? Didn't you hot foot? You Friday. You've been holding this letter since Friday. We want to know. Come on. Did you call yet? Are you going to call? We're so excited for you. Please let us know how it goes. Andrew's Chris. saying that they have agreed to speak on Sunday. Brilliant. Wonderful. Just remember now, you know, no pointing fingers, uh, no anger, no frustration, no let it all go because it simply is not worth it. <coughs> it really is not. Living in regret, you know, is, is it's just not worth it. Okay, Chris, keep going. It Eric would like to know, do emotions have different energy vibrations and colors? Oh, yes. Every emotion has its own vibrational level. Every, every, uh, uh, every emotion shows in one way or another. Yes, absolutely, Eric. And how are you, my darling? How are you doing? <laughs> okay, keep going, Chris. All right. Lorraine is asking, is a woman punished with not conceiving due to having an abortion earlier in life? No, darling. No. You know, <clears throat> there's, there's an awful lot of uh, uh, conjecture about what happens if people have abortions. And uh, look, you know, nobody can say how a person is feeling it, if, if you're having a baby that you you either you don't want or you're not ready for it or you for whatever reason it is but here's the thing if that baby is meant to be born if that baby is meant to have a life it will no matter what what we do no matter what happens we will be stopped at the at the last minute before we you know go into have you know <clears throat> to have the procedure done or we will be talked out of it or for whatever reason if that soul is meant to be born to this earth it will be born to this earth no matter what we do however and i find this such an interesting and fascinating subject because there are many souls who want the experience of either being in the womb uh they want an earth experience but they don't want a long earth experience they simply want just that experience of what it's like to be in the womb what it's like to connect with another soul the soul of the mother um or many souls choose to take their first breath or even you know to live for a day or two just experiencing the energy experiencing the vibration experiencing all of that that happens to us when we're in the room, womb prior to our birth and so on but many many souls choose we think perhaps that we're doing the choosing but that isn't so many souls choose to have that brief encounter that brief uh knowledge and that brief understanding that brief experience of the earth and the earth plane and and our humanness and what it is like to connect in human form but they don't want it on a long-term basis so when they come here they've already they know that they are only here for a short time uh, they know that um you know it's it's simply um you know for just that brief moment in time to have that human connection and that's what they need and that's what they need in their lives and that's what they need in their their experiences in order to grow and to learn what it feels like so you know for all of you out there who feel uh you know you did a terrible thing um we have much less control over our lives than we think we do uh, I do not believe that we're punished. I think it's something that we have chosen to go through, perhaps. I think it's something that we're meant to experience. Um, and, um, you know, I, I remember uh, years ago before Samantha was born, I remember being taken into the hospital because I'd had uh, yet another miscarriage. And... The, and the curtains were drawn around me. I'd been in for the, my procedure. They'd clean me out, what have you. And one of the nurses was saying to the other nurse, oh, this lady in this bed just had an abortion. 
and I went ballistic. I went absolutely crazy because that's not what happened. Little did I know that that was the term that the medical profession used when something like this happens. The baby has aborted itself. And that's what happens. The baby is aborted. The soul aborts itself. So please, 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 please don't feel terrible. And please don't feel that there's punishment there because there isn't. Chris. Josephine says, my son says a girl we do not see is touching him sexually and he wants her to leave. Does Grey Eagle see this girl or have any advice for us? First of all, I would not talk about this on this show, but I would. this is what I'm going to advise you to do. I need to know the age of your son. I need to know what he's seeing, why he's seeing it. I need to know more about that. And if you would like to write in, uh, we can either work out that I can have a brief conversation with you about it or with your son about it, or we can figure this out for you. Um, <clears throat> I'm, yeah, uh, that's as much as I'm going to say about it. Um, I know that it's possible, but it's unlikely unless, well, we're going to leave it at that. So uh, if you'd like to let me know more about what's going on, we can see if we can help you. Absolutely. Chris. Uh, that's that's it for questions. There's just so many, you know, happy birthday wishes for Reese. Okay. Well, in that case, I have a very exciting thing to do this afternoon. Um, I can't tell you what it's about. Um but it is, you know, uh, it's a special day. So I have to do a special thing today, which I'll explain to you all next Saturday, probably. Uh, no, we and, won't be here next Saturday. Oh, we won't be here. Well, then you'll have to wait until the following Saturday. Uh, how about that? So, yes, we are not going to be here next week because my daughter and my grandson are coming. Uh, and we are also... Chris, I know you've got things to do. So don't think we've abandoned you. We will uh, have uh, some off the cuff stuff. Uh, let's see if we can arrange something with the two Ks to do something like that maybe next week or the week after as well. Let's have a bit of fun, Chris, with that. So even though we won't be here on Saturday morning, this coming, this next Saturday morning, we'll make up for it by doing some other stuff. What do you think? Let's do some off the cuff stuff, Chris. Maybe we'll do some off the cuff stuff when when uh, Reese is here on Friday night. Hmm, how about that? We, that's possible, right? That's doable. Is possible. it doable? Or will you be busy? No, I'll be here. Okay. All right. So we will not see you next week, but we will see you the week after. In the meantime. We will see you on Thursday morning and we will be popping in and out throughout the week and maybe even this weekend. We maybe do something tonight or maybe tomorrow. You never know when we're going to appear. And um, remember that uh, uh, this month is all about love. And we talked about babies. We talked about the future. And it's all about love, isn't it? It's uh, the, the love of a child to a parent or a grandparent, the love of a parent or a grandparent to a child wow 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 are we lucky that we experience that kind of love the love of a the love of a, a little uh, puppy dog or the love of a little kitten chris how's your little uh graham cracker doing <laughs> <laughs> oh he, he how's, keeps how's moonlight doing <laughs> every time he hears your voice rosemary he runs to the computer to see you <laughs> Does he? Oh, I, I, he's beautiful he's a lovely little kitty uh not so little anymore right uh, so, you know, so please, all of you, thank you so much for joining us today. I'd like to say thank you, Chris, because you are amazing as usual. And I would especially like to say thank you to uh, Grey Eagle. Uh, I'm laughing, my daddy, <laughs> who is looking at me. And, oh, are you? And he's going with me this afternoon on my Oh, that's trip. great. <laughs> on my little trip, yeah. And... Um, Oh, well, I know Grey Eagle's going too. And of course, let's not forget Mike as well, who's blowing kisses to you, Chris. So 
uh, until I see you all again, thank you so much for joining us. We do have fun on these shows and we love to hear from you. We love to interact with you. <coughs> please, 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 until I see you again, please have a very, very blessed rest of the day, everybody, and have a very blessed and a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>